Hey guys, it's Matt with the YouTube channel Bleepin' Jeep. Today I want to talk to you about parasitic draw. But then I want to go a little bit further. A lot of channels out there, they have videos on parasitic draw, but they stop once they find the problem. I want to go into it a little more in depth after we figure out the problem and see what you can do about it. So if you're having this problem, usually it's going to manifest itself in a dead battery. It seems like no matter what you do, you can charge it a hundred times, but it always ends up dead a few days later. And usually what that means is you have a bad battery, you have a bad alternator, or you have a parasitic draw. And what a parasitic draw means is just that either there's a short in the wire somewhere or there's something on that you don't know about that's pulling amperage from the battery and killing it over a period of time. So if you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that it is a parasitic draw and that you do have a good battery and a good alternator to start with. The way you want to check your battery is get a voltmeter, put it on DC volts 20, and we're going to check the battery. It should be around 12.6 or above. That's a good battery. So make sure you have a good battery to start, that it's fully charged, that your alternator is good, of course, and then you want to go ahead and check your battery cable terminals. So you want to check the cables, make sure there's no corrosion, and make sure you clean them up good because sometimes you will have a no start issue and it's just the battery terminals are gross and disgusting and it's not getting a good connection between the post and the terminal. So make sure that's good. The next thing that we're going to do is turn your multimeter to amps. So right here you'll see 10 amps. It's handy if you have a multimeter that has milliamps as well if you have a very small draw, but this one will work. And then we're going to pull this. Usually you have to pull the red wire and put it over on the different setting for the amps. Now on the leads, it's going to be handy if you have something like alligator clamps or a partner to help hold these, but the clamps will help. You can do it yourself. So the next step is to take the negative battery terminal and pull it off of the post and just set it aside. So the next step is real important. When we connect these to the negative post here and the negative terminal, everything that your car is doing is going to be running through this little wire. So you want to make sure that all the lights are off, the headlights are off, um, the door is closed because when your door is open, what comes on? The lights come on. You don't want that to happen. So either close your door or tape off the little sensor that um, turns the lights on. So inside the door there will usually be a little latch and you can tape that closed. Uh, do whatever you have to do to turn everything off before you connect this up. And make sure that once you do connect this up that you do not um, open the door, turn on the lights, try to start the car, anything like that. Okay, so right away you can see a number shows up here. And we're on the 10 amp scale and we're reading 0.7 6.75. So what that means is that something is drawing power from the battery. You don't want this number to be anything over 50 milliamps. So on this scale that would be 0 0.05 and we're at 0 0.75. So there's something drawing power and that's going to kill the battery in just a couple days, if not faster. So the next thing we need to do is move over to the fuse panel inside the vehicle, but here's a handy little trick. Since I've got these long leads on here, I can take this and put it on the window. That way I can see it from inside. I don't have to get out and come around every time. So the next step is to find your fuse panel. A lot of times that's going to be underneath your feet somewhere by the dash. And figure out where that is. I've got a light in here, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So all we need to do now is come in here and start pulling fuses one by one. And every time we pull a fuse, go ahead and look at the meter and see if it changed. See if it went down to zero. Just keep doing that one by one until you find something. Now keep in mind there's also fuses inside the engine bay sometimes. Sometimes you'll have more than one fuse panel as well. Did you see that? When I pulled that fuse right there, the gauge went down to zero. The meter went to zero. Check it out again. So 
there's our problem. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, what do I do now? Well, the next thing you should do is take the little cover. A lot of times on the cover, it'll tell you what the fuse is for. So if you look here, the one that we pulled that helped us out, it's number seven, cluster. So in my case, that doesn't really help me a lot, but let's say you had one that said cigarette lighter. Well, in that case, you know that maybe your cigarette lighter is bad, or it could be the wire leading to your cigarette lighter is shorted out somewhere. So if it did say cigarette lighter on here, you would want to either replace the cigarette lighter or trace the wiring to the cigarette lighter and figure out where your short is. Another thing might be um, the dome lights. Um, maybe there's a radio. So if it was the radio uh, fuse, you could go and check the radio. Maybe your head unit was bad. Maybe the wiring to the radio was bad. In my case, the cluster doesn't really tell me a whole lot. So what do I do now? So what did I do next? Well, the main thing you need to figure out is what does that fuse control? So I just used the handy dandy internet, typed in what does number seven fuse do on a 1998 Jeep Grand Cherokee? Now you could also use something like a Haynes manual or you could use a subscription to all data to figure this out as well. It turns out that the number seven fuse controls the body control module. I didn't really know much about that, so I typed in what does the body control module do on a 98 Grand Cherokee. Well, it turns out that the body control module controls a whole lot of things. So it controls the gauges, it uh, tells the dome lights when to cut on and when to cut off, it tells the wipers when to cut on when it's raining, it uh, tells the temperature outside, and a lot of the functions that uh, that on the gauges that you see lighting up and stuff like that and the different controls for when to shut on and off lights after you've left the vehicle say for 15 minutes and you've left your headlights on and those shut off the body control module controls that so really it didn't help me at all because there's no way I can check all of those things to figure out which one is causing the problem or where the short is so what did I do next? Come here and I'll show you. Okay, we're back here looking at the fuse panel again. I know that this is my problem fuse right here. There's something going on on the other side of that fuse. Now I know that each one of these fuses is connected to a bundle of these wires. So this fuse controls a bundle of these wires somewhere. So I've still got my meter hooked up and it's still showing that it's pulling amperage from somewhere. So the next thing that I did was I came in here and I just grabbed these bundles. There's a little clip on them. And if you pull them just right, you can pull one of these out of here. here. Ugh. Okay, so I pulled that out. I look at my meter. It's still showing that it's drawing. So I know that's not the one. So, what I did, I just went around pulling each one of these until I finally found the problem one, and it happens to be this one right here. So when I pull this guy out, it goes back down to zero. So I know that it's somewhere in these bundle of wires. Whatever these bundle of wires are controlling, that's where my problem is, somewhere down the line from here. Okay, so once again, you could probably look this up somewhere and figure out which, where each one of these wires is going, and then you could go test each one of those things. So let's say this was your headlights. You could go check to make sure there wasn't a short in your headlight. And let's say this one was your dome light. You could go check all your dome lights and go see if there was a short or maybe a bad dome light causing your problem. I didn't want to have time for that, so let me show you what I did. So I have this bundle pulled out, my meter's still hooked up, and my meter is reading zero now, because whatever it is, is disconnected when I pull this out. So on the back side of here, 
there's some uh, little female pen ends and then male pen ends on the other side. So I just made me a little tool. I took some alligator uh, wires here and I put a nail in one side and the other side has alligator clip. And I'm going to test each one of these. So find the pin number one over here and we're going to plug it in to the corresponding pin. So when you would plug this in, it would go into this pin right here and you want to connect that. Now I'm going to look at my meter. If my meter shows that I'm drawing amperage, when I do that, I know that's the wire. So that's not the one. So we're going to move it over to the next one. Put the pin in here. No draw. I'm going to keep doing that. Okay, check it out. That one right there. When I look at my meter, there's my draw. So that wire right there is the one that's controlling whatever it is that's broken. So it's that purple wire right here. Now, I could look this up on the computer somewhere, figure out what that purple wire controls, and go and fix it. Another option, and what I did, was I just chose to cut the wire. When, you, when I cut the wire, it went away, and problem solved. Now, of course, if that wire controlled something important, you would have to go back and fix it. Now, in my case, I'm pretty sure, not positive, I couldn't figure out what that wire controls, but I'm pretty sure that wire that I cut controls something that tells when my back hatch is open. So the reason I was having all these problems is that the computer thought my back hatch was open and it kept on trying to send that information to me and flash some lights and tell me that my back hatch was open even when the car and the vehicle was off. I was never getting that signal up here in the uh, control module thingamabobber but um, I'm pretty sure that's what it was and I'm pretty sure I don't need that. I'm pretty sure I can figure out if my back hatch is open or not all on my own. So uh, just cutting that wire solved my problem. Now if that wire was something important like you know your fuel pump or something like that obviously you're gonna have to patch that wire back together and go figure out the problem somewhere down the line. But um, it could be that this wire is shorted somewhere along the line and it's not really practical to follow these wires all the way through the whole dash. You'd have to tear this whole car apart to figure out where that wire is shorted. But it also could be the end. So maybe the little sensor that tells me that the door is open and closed on the back hatch is shorted out somehow. But in my case, I'm just going to leave it like that. Not worry about it again. This is the cheap Jeep, by the way. So, cheap fix. I'm glad that's over. So, I kind of figured it out now. The previous owner had pulled all of the dome lights out and I was wondering why would they do that? But I think I figured it out now. If that sensor back there was bad and it was saying that uh, the back hatch was open all the time, that would have kept the dome lights on, killing the battery. Now it still killed the battery after a few days and I'm thinking that's because the back hatch being open or it thinking it being open was telling the computer to let me know and flash some lights or ding or chirp or whatever that the back hatch was open even though that wasn't happening up here. It's complicated. Lots of computers. I hate computers. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your buddies. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time. It's Matt with Bleepin' Jeep. Bye.